Welcome to another quick tutorial here. Uh, this one might actually be a little bit longer, um, but I wanted to kind of go into depth and show you guys how to create, um, you know, some some pretty cool architectural visualizations using video. Uh, and so we've got this scene here below. It's just two tracked clips, and I'll show you how to do each one. But they basically use the same techniques. Um, and so this is a really good thing to add into, um, you know, any kind of real estate videos that you might have or projects you have upcoming where. Uh, you know, it's an unfinished project um, and people want to put the 3D model of the building into it. So if I click play here, you're going to notice I've got this nice pan here showing a, a model stuck into my footage. And it's also going to transition to another clip um, from there that shows the 3D model from a ground view um, kind of panning up. Uh, with real elements in it and you could have cars and everything driving by to make it look more realistic this scene just happened to be pretty static when I shot it um, so let's kind of dive into how this looks so here's what my project looks like in Cinema 4D um, I've got my 3D model in my footage um, it was a kind of a quick and dirty I used some some drawings that were given to me by the client and then here at the bottom I've got this thing that I'm calling my shadow it's essentially just a shadow catcher um, and then I'm using the tool called the uh, motion tracker which is a very powerful tool in, uh, in, in using uh, and then I've got my sky elements here that I'm using to get some realistic reflections and some lighting so um, you can see if I just kind of render this scene um, I won't see the background inside of Cinema 4D I have it used just for compositing but you'll see this later when we get back to After Effects so let's go ahead and set up a new scene and I am going to go inside of the motion tracker and just click motion tracker. So now I've got my motion tracker um, settings all, all in down here and I'm going to go ahead and bring in some, uh, some footage that I have. Um, okay, so I have my footage in here now and it, as, as you can see it's just the video that I rendered out as an mp4 to kind of cut down on file size. Um, and it shows my my spot my location here is going to be this construction zone and if you want to up the resolution while you're working uh, you can just come down into uh, resampling and increase that percentage but by default uh, Cinema 4D kind of keeps it a little bit lower so that's why it looks pixelated but I wouldn't worry about that too much um, so what we're going to do is we need to track this footage um, and under 2D tracking I'm just going to up the number of tracks up to something like a thousand just so I can see more because this is a fairly complex scene and uh, everything else I'm going to kind of leave leave as it is and I'm just going to hit auto track and I'm going to let the tracker do its work okay so it's finished it's tracking and you'll notice that it's done a decent job of attaching points throughout the scene. Some of them come to life and disappear as you can see. Some of these points aren't active throughout the whole scene, but that doesn't mean that you can't use them. Um, so now what we're going to do is the next step is just click on our 3D solve and this is basically going to create a 3D reconstruction of the scene giving depth to these points. Because right now all you'd have is two-dimensional uh, points throughout the scene. Um, if you know your camera settings you can plug that in, but I'm just going to leave it as unknown but constant and just let the let the uh, uh, solver do it itself. I flew this with a DJI Mavic 2 so I could put in some some things for focal length I believe it's 28 um, and, and, and change this a little bit but let's just run the 3D solver as is. Okay so now I have my scene completely solved um, and by default it's still showing you the same scene however you can click on your solved camera and you can start to see all of this depth here you notice it also calculated the focal length for my camera automatically and it added all these keyframes in and now I've got a lot more points to pick from throughout my scene but I still don't know what my plane is my ground plane and, and, and as you can see here uh, it's sort of angled um, and following these street street lines is kind of where I'm looking as far as developing a flat plane so if I click on go back to my motion tracker now I'll have all these things highlightable I'm going to click my create planar constraint and I'm basically going to look for a good 
set of points that I can attach a plane to um, to, to qualify as my ground uh, for this scene. And, and you know, you can up the number of points if you want to, 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 to help with this, but I think I have enough. And I think I'm just gonna use uh, some of these points here on the street. And I you click three and it makes this little triangle. And now it's attached to the little point to my motion tracker, uh, which the mode is features defined plane. I, what I wanted to do is have that on the Y axis. And now I can see my plane um, in much better view is, is getting closer to to the plane that I want, but it's calculating this plane as being at a, at a, a pretty decent angle that I don't want. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and adjust the scene. Okay, so I just added another uh, planer um, here on the y-axis. And now I'm, a much, I'm much closer to the angle that I want, but let's add another one and see if we can keep refining this. So let's, let's draw one right in here. Okay, it really wants the angle to be slightly downward, and that might just be because of the panning effect of the camera. And maybe we'll add one more here on this rooftop since I know this is kind of a flat, a flat rooftop. And so it's basically told me that it thinks that the plane is slightly angled as such. So if we go into our camera view now, and we go to our front view, now you can see all your points lined up here, and, and this is where the drone essentially was. So this is now doing a pretty good job of mimicking the action that I did with my drone when I was flying. So we can use this, and uh, I'm just gonna add a new cube. And kind of drag it into where I think it would be. And then back into our solved camera. Okay, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to uh, what I want my scene to, the angle I want my scene camera to take on. And so with some, some minor refinements here of, this, of the uh, cube, I can get to a position where I want that building to be that's, that's pretty accurate. And if we just kind of scrub forward, you can see it's doing a, a good job now of positioning itself. If you want to take this even one step further, you can actually go into these individual features. Um, and let's say this feature right here I know is where I want the building to be. Uh, what we can do is we can, uh, we can now select that feature. And under Auto Features, we can scroll down and kind of find it. Now I've found it's Auto 0595. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this one to the very top. And I'm going to make my cube a child of that. And I'm just going to take my coordinates and zero them out. And now if we track, you'll notice uh, it's doing a, it's right now, it's basically centered right where that point is. And if I, if I uh, hide my cube, you can see the axis right on that point, And it's put the cube right in the middle of it. So from here, we can kind of adjust manually and start making some, some, some tweaks to give that building perspective the exact angle and, and rotation and coordinates that we want. And I might just adjust it slightly like that. And now it's pretty, it's pretty dang close to what we want as far as uh, where that building is gonna be. Um, you know, it's a good idea to just kind of scrub through and get an idea, is it drifting? If it's drifting, you might need to adjust slightly uh, where it where it sits, but it is sticking to that auto feature pretty pretty well. Um, and again, that auto feature is right there on the building. But maybe I'll select a different one. Let's try let's try this one and see if I can get a better result. So auto 0709. Let's just bring that out. Let's take our cube, make it a child zero out coordinates and turn it back on again and now we're starting to get there I think this is probably a little bit better and obviously you know you've got some things in the foreground here that are um, that are making it look 
like it's moving, but it's really not moving in the scene whatsoever. It's just that these buildings are closer, so you'll see it move past those buildings in the scene. So that, that's a pretty good starting point. We're gonna go with that. Next thing we need to do is we need to create um, just a, a plane that's gonna go around the building that's gonna act as our, as our shadow catcher. Um, so let's just go in and let's grab a plane. Okay, I accidentally zeroed out the auto planes location. So let's make the plane a child of the cube and not the feature so we don't mess with the feature at all. Let's go ahead and add that in. And we can add now the same rotation as the cube. Um, so by default, the plane is uh, rotated here. So let's zero all these features out as well. So now we've got a nice flat plane that we can change the size of. And we'll do something like that. And this is just, just being used to catch our shadows. Okay, so this should move perfectly now with the cube and be a nice flat overlay of our scene. Um, all right, so now we need to get some lighting in here to see if we are getting, if we can get some of the shadows that we want to mimic the lighting in the scene. So let's just throw in a, uh, a physical sky. Uh, it's gonna take care, take control of your scene. So we wanna make sure that we go to compositing and click on compositing background and turn off scene by camera. So if we do a quick render, we can see we are getting our lighting. Now, obviously when you render, you don't see the footage. So what you can do is add in a background element. And if we kind of go back into our standard setup here that you guys are probably really familiar with, we're gonna add a new material and we're just gonna load in the footage uh, that we used to do the background tracking. So, And we're gonna now add this to the background. You're not gonna see any change here, but that's just gonna mean when you render, you can see the footage the way it's going to appear. Um, you're probably gonna wanna change your output, make sure it's matching the settings of that video clip. That's gonna be important when we export later into After Effects. Um, there's a lot of different ways to use lighting. You, you could use your own lights and just you know place them in a way that you want, but Physical Sky is nice because we can just go into our sun or into our lighting and just kind of change the time and location. And what we're trying to get is, I want this side to be shadowed because I can see that on these other buildings. That there's a good shadow on that side. The sun's basically coming from, from this direction over here. Um, and I can just kind of play around with the time of my light. And in some cases, you can use the exact time and date that the footage was shot uh, to mimic how the sun is hitting that building. So that's starting to get to be pretty close. You can see these shadows are, are stretching kind of down the streets here. Um, and as we just kind of keep going later in the day, now we've gotten to a place that's pretty, pretty accurate as far as lighting is concerned. Um, so I'm gonna just leave that as is. Um, if you want to do more uh, adjustments, you can change the the height and location of the sun. Um, so I can change the uh, horizon start here. So if I want to start it much higher, now I'm going to get a much more direct sun angle. So you can play around with horizon start. And we probably want this to be around like 35 or something like that. Just give me a nice higher sun angle. Now we've got the shadow that we want, right? Just a, a little shadow that's coming and it's stretching back, but it's not, it's not gonna cover up the buildings behind it because I don't see any of these other buildings. If I look down here, I don't see them stretching and covering up that building. So that's a pretty good, pretty good place to start. And then we're gonna go in here, we're gonna load a material preset um, sorry, we're going to go to Shader, Shadow Catcher, and we're going to throw this on the uh, plane. So it's not going to do anything by default. Okay, so we've got that. So now let's say we've got um, you know buildings that are going to have reflective lighting. Um, so let's go ahead. I've, I've got the building that I use for that scene in my user library. Let's grab the... Uh, Let's grab the building model and let's go ahead and just kind of bring this into our scene. And just like before, same process, let's make this a child of the cube and let's change all the coordinates and the 
angle. And I want to have, let's say, you know, this side of the building showing. And now at this point, I don't need my, my cube anymore. Um, so if I render this out, you'll notice that I've got some reflectiveness going on here because I have reflections on these windows. Uh, but if you want to have a particular effect, you can add now a sky to this and let's create a new material and that's going to be So I go into my uh, content browser and I type sky. I've got a couple different uh, options. Um, let's just try this right here, the sky, and I'm going to drag it into my tutorial. And uh, my sky is going to get added, and I'm just going to add the sky to it. So by default, now I've got this blue sky in the background. And again, we have the same issue where we have to add a compositing tag. And we'll do compositing background, it's not seen by camera. And we've now got the sky element that you can't really see, but if we add a, if we go into our cube here, and just make, let's make this side a really reflective material. Um, so I'll go into my reflectance, I'll add a, a legacy reflector here, super reflective just for the tutorial's sake. Now I can see that horizon of blue um, in the background. It's doing, a, it's doing what it's supposed to do um, as far as reflections. And if I want to jump out of my camera view and just kind of make sure that it's really picking up the sky, I can see as I move, I can see those clouds gen being generated. So I'm getting the reflection I want from my image. So if you have a 360 image from where you actually shot it, you can get the real time, uh, the real time reflection in there. Um, so now I have all of this, I'm going to save it and let's go ahead and let's, we're going to start now a new After Effects uh, project. So I'll go to File Import and here's my tutorial pan and I'm just going to drag it into my comp. Um, so by default it's going to have, have the renderer set to software. You can set it to standard final, and now you can see exactly what it's going to look like in your scene. Um, and so since everything is blacked out in my scene as far as the background video being seen by camera, that's, that's what you want because you want to have that as a separate layer when you start going into color correcting. So let's go into uh, and find the original clip. This is this aerial pan clip. And now if I drag it out underneath, there is my scene with my footage in the foreground or in the background and my model doing exactly what I want it to do. And you'll notice I'm having trouble with the reflections. Um, that can happen sometimes if you don't save uh, the project with all of its assets. So what I need to do is go file, save project with assets go to this location and now I'm going to call it tutorial pan 2. Now let's go back in and let's import that again. If I bring this in I should now get my reflection And there it is. Okay, so now it brought in that material as well. So important to keep in mind that if you save your uh, Cinema 4D file and you don't make sure that those materials are attached, those materials are going to disappear. Okay, so that's kind of part one, getting your scene set up. Now you can see I've got a lot more work to do. Um, for one, I'm blacking out all these buildings. So in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to um, how to do some editing to, to mask these out so the building looks like it's really stuck inside of that space. Um, so thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.